Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm a Boeing 737 pilot and today let's talk about the recent discussion about the new weather add-on XNVIO 2020 that's been released a few days ago for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now there has been quite a heated discussion in the flight simulation community about this add-on and I would like to give you my personal opinion on the add-on, have a look at the product page and analyze some of the screenshots that we got from the developer that he's using to advertise his add-on and add a little bit of my experience as a line pilot into all of that. At the end of the video I'm going to give my personal opinion on the overall discussion and the add-on in question, so stay tuned if you are looking for that as well. Now. For those of you who don't know, this is the new add-on that we are talking about, AxenVio 2020, Return to Realism is what they say. And this is the product page. It's been released on the Threshold Store for a price tag of 42 US dollars, which is quite steep for a weather tool like this. And the developers themselves say, with over 10 years of experience with reproducing real weather on X-Plane with realistic training in mind. We have ported the core of XNVIO over to Microsoft Flight Simulator to get the most precise weather in the most popular simulator. Now, if we just have a quick look at the FS Elite article and we scroll down a little bit, we can find an interesting statement there that the developer has made on his Facebook group, which is, and I quote, This is an urgent project that will hopefully mend economic difficulties for the development team. Quote end. Now, that is a statement that caught a lot of users' attention and therefore quite a heated debate has developed and the developer himself made quite a lot of uh, statements on the FS Elite page on the comments down there which are rather interesting to read. Basically, to summarize the two positions, we have a lot of uh, customers saying that the add-on is a pure cash grab. And we have a developer saying it's not a cash grab, it is a port from the previous simulator and he accuses a lot of the customers to uh, twist the words in his mind and to make wrong accusations. Now if we go a little bit down further then he does add quite a bit of, um, he comments to a lot of users saying it's great commitment to the echo chamber of haters etc if people say that the add-on is a cash grab. Now before we're gonna comment on that any further let's have an actual look into the add-on and see what it's supposed to provide and have a look at the screenshots provided on the product page and I'm going to give you a little bit of opinion on what is actually shown over there. So this is the three key features that in my opinion we're looking at in the add-on. Atmosphere conditions based on dynamic air parcel prediction models used for real aviation research and training. Advanced atmosphere topology methods provide accurate cloud thickness and density prediction. And atmosphere quality includes humidity, pollution and fine particle amount. Alright, so that sounds certainly quite interesting. Especially saying over here, XNVIO has been designed by aviation professionals for training purposes. And saying up here with realistic training in mind. So that is setting a very, very high bar for this add-on. Now let's have a look into the three screenshots provided. In every single one of them, on the left side, we can see what XNVIO is offering. On the right side, we can see how the default Microsoft Flight Simulator weather engine is interpreting the meta. And finally, we can see the meta in question on the bottom of the screen. So looking at the first picture, we have wind of 16 knots, 10 kilometers visibility and few clouds at 2500 feet. Now looking out over here that is definitely few clouds and they are rather close to the ground so that looks pretty spot on. On the right hand side with Microsoft Flight Simulator this is well quite a bit more than what few clouds would actually look like in real life. This is more scattered scenario that we are seeing over here so if this was a scattered scenario in the meta, then I would say Microsoft Flight Simulator is looking very good. But for a few scenarios, Microsoft is definitely overdoing it. XNVIO easily wins this one. Let's have a look at the next one though. And this is where things start getting interesting. We have a gusting wind. 
tank miles of visibility, low drifting snow, broken clouds at 1300, 6000 and 7000 feet and a temperature of minus 3 degrees. Now let's compare the two pictures. On the left picture we definitely have good visibility, 10 miles. Low drifting snow. Now where is the low drifting snow over here? I don't see any. I do see some snow on the um, fields next to the runway. But low drifting snow usually is a scenario, speaking from the 737's perspective, when you're sitting in the flight deck and looking out to the uh, aprons, taxiways and uh, runways, then you would have difficulty seeing what is actually on the ground due to a lot of snow that's being blown around. Imagine you have a snow bank next to a road and then a strong wind is blowing into it, like we can see over here gusting 24 knots. So that snowbank is then being blown away and that is what low blowing snow or low drifting snow as we can uh, see in the meta description over here actually means. If you want to have a look at the precise prediction just have a look over here. DR is uh, low drifting and SN as we know is snow. So low drifting snow that is like really we would expect a lot of snow giving us bad visibility on the ground. So just on the you know lowest meter or two of altitude so just really the lowest couple of feet over the ground where we would be expecting drifting snow now we do have a bit of snow next to the runway over here but apart from that that is not really accurate on the other hand side markers of themselves are giving us some snow in the atmosphere but that is not low drifting as we would expect from the meta but at least they have some sort of snow in here even though we don't have any snow next to the runways, so X and Vial gives you the snow on the ground, Microsoft gives you the snow in the air, neither of the two is correct. Then looking at the uh, clouds, a broken layer of clouds is usually a really thick layer that has only very little room where you might be able to look up higher through the cloud layer. It's not completely overcast. But my impression when I started flying in real life after being a flight simmer for many, many years was that a broken cloud layer usually is much thicker than what you would expect as a flight simmer. So we have a low lying layer here at 1300 feet, which we can definitely see in the Microsoft version. But in the um, Axon Vio version, and this is too high for being 1,300 feet. Probably this is the layer that they are talking about, but we should be having a broken layer over here. So that should more or less obscure like the vast majority of the sky we should be seeing in the screenshot. So Microsoft does have to does seem to have quite a better depiction there. Now looking up higher, then we have broken 6,000, broken 7,000. No, now with two broken layers right on top of one another that would appear like an overcast sky. When we're looking into the pictures of X and Vio over here, we can see a lot of uh, bright clouds, which implies that there is sun shining through there. We can actually see a huge hole in the clouds up here. Now, that is not what three broken layers on top of one another would look like. Microsoft is getting a lot closer here. We're seeing some thick black clouds where there is hardly any sun shining through and this is much more what I would expect seeing the meta than what we have on the left hand side from X and Vio. Now let's have a look at the third picture there. Third times the charm as they say. We have one that X and Vio wins, one that Microsoft wins. So let's have a look into this one. We have winds gusting at 30 knots, 10 kilometers visibility in light rain, broken 1500, overcast 3014 degrees. So I'm looking at the picture. Before we start judging anything, let's roundabout guesstimate how high we are flying. Looking outside, we are not very high, but we aren't very low either. So I would guesstimate we're flying maybe at an altitude between two and 4,000 feet-ish, probably rather closer to the 2,000 and the 4,000. So let's say we're at some point between two and 3,000 feet. Now, looking at the overall scenario, 10 kilometers visibility, we have that in both pictures light rain well this is not light rain this is moderate to heavy rain you can't watch you can't see through it you can't 
you know, if you fly into this, your visibility will get close to zero, not the overall 10 kilometers in light rain that we would be expecting from this scenario. So looking at the Microsoft version of things, that does seem to be quite a lot closer to what I would be expecting. We do have some light rain showers. We can see that over here. And we can see that all the way to the uh, back. But we we have some light rain in, in the uh, foreground of the picture as well here. But overall, the 10 kilometers visibility is maintained with some light rain in the area. That is much more what I would expect seeing the meta below. Then we have clouds broken 1,500, overcast 3,000. So just like on the previous picture, that broken cloud layer is going to look almost like an overcast layer when you are flying uh, close to it, especially when you're looking at it from the ground. And then we have an overcast layer on top. So on the left hand side here, that seems to be our broken layer there. That might be all right if we just forget about that rain below. But then we should have an overcast layer on top of that. And we can see over here there's still so much sun shining like this is really the start of the front over here. That is not what the meta is giving us. The meta tells us we have a widespread scenario. See, no significant change at the end of the meta. So we would be expecting a widespread scenario all the way over the area that would actually give us an obscured sky with a rather dark atmosphere due to the uh, broken and overcast layers and then a little bit of rain. Microsoft captures that so much better on the right hand side over here. Like we can see our broken layer, that's the one we have over here that we are just about flying above I would say or that we're just about flying through. And then we have the overcast layer on top that we can see up here that is actually dark black like we would be like exactly what we would be expecting in a rainy day scenario with an overcast layer of clouds and the broken layer below that. So Microsoft absolutely wins this one, especially seeing no significant change. In here we don't see any change coming up. Over here, well, imagine this being blown over here, like from the clouds we can see they should be moving to the left over here. So things definitely aren't no sick, but are about to improve. Overall, Microsoft definitely wins this one. So that is it. That's the three pictures we have available on the product page. And that's what he's advertising with. Now, if that is the quality of the product, two of them are blatantly wrong. While only the first one actually acts and via wins over Microsoft Flight Simulator. So that's what we're looking at when we are discussing the quality of this add-on. There is one more feature over here that we quickly have to talk about, which is historical weather data is available at 30 minute intervals. Now, historical weather is something a lot of flight simulators have been aiming for and have been wishing for that Microsoft never implemented. Now, that sounds very promising, doesn't it? Well, I'm looking over the product page and I'm trying to find something on it that is in the FS Elite article that is actually not on the product page, at least not as far as I can see. And if we have a look at FS Elite over here, then we can see up here, it is good to know that the historical weather started on the 16th of October 2022 and beyond. In other words, historical weather is only available for the last two weeks prior to release. I'm recording this one on the 28th of October, so 12 days after the starting date of this one. And, well, that is quite weak. If I'm thinking about historical weather, I would love to simulate these storms I've been flying in in February 2020, where I've been doing wind shear go around after wind shear go around, and that was in real life. That is what I would love to see if I have historical weather. And seeing that we are talking about an add-on that's been ported from X-Plane, it seems kind of strange that we don't have data like this available. Now, let's have a look at one more thing, and that is the comments down here. We have people accusing the developer of being a cash grab. Keep in mind, $42 for this. And then we have the developer defending himself. But it's interesting seeing this particular example here, where they say they admit it's a cash grab nice, and then they go on a little bit. You can read that yourself. And then the developer answers, like, great commitment to the echo chamber of haters. 
come on, that is not how you treat potential customers. That is not even how you treat people who aren't your customers, but people who are answering to what you wrote yourself. Now, Matthias Koch from Aerosoft makes quite a statement down here talking about it, and I find that he definitely made some points. So, all of us who've been in the flight simulator industry will probably have heard the name of Matthias, or at least the name of Aerosoft. And while certainly not everyone is 100% happy with uh, some of the ways that Aerosoft has been going, we can all agree that not everything has been to what some of us would have been expecting. However, Matthias is doing this job for a long time, and I've been working for him for a period of six years before I became an airline pilot. So I have a huge respect for this guy, and I know that he does know what he's talking about. Even though some of his decisions in development are not always 100% of um, what I personally would be hoping for, but nonetheless, he knows what he's talking about. And after all, the financial success of Aerosoft definitely proves that. Just have a look at the CRJ, the first aircraft released for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, that one definitely isn't perfect. In fact, a bit of far from it. Yes, anchor. But, you know, it is a hugely popular product in the Flight Simulator community. So, reading Matthias' comments down here, I would have loved for the developer to answer to that. But, having a look down here... He didn't, unfortunately. And talking about the overall cash grab thing over here, someone is saying there's an urgent project that will hopefully mend economic difficulties for the development team. Absolutely not. And then the developer replies, it already has. In other words, the developer is saying that, well, thank you guys for your money. And I'm really happy about it. Well, I promised you I would give you my personal opinion on this at the end of the video. So, with the previous part of the video, I tried to shed a little bit of light into what the add-on is actually giving you or delivering to you as per the product page. Now, the product page is where you usually show your add-on in the best possible shape. Like... Anybody who's trying to sell something is going to try to show his thing in the best possible way. And the way the text is written down here, implying it's designed for realistic training by aviational professionals for training purposes. And giving all the details that we have in here, like providing accurate cloud thickness and density. And then we have a look at the screenshots. That is disappointing. And that brings us right to the part of my personal opinion. And I will not so much focus my personal opinion on X and Y itself, but I will focus it on a general trend that I see happening in the Flight Simulator 2020 community within the last two years. Now, initially we had some releases like Carinado and the Aerosoft CRJ, and those were some first experiments with the simulator, and we saw how they ended. Now, you can think of those products whatever you want to. Actually, I've had quite a bit of fun and if I have a look into my sim toolkit pro I see some 200 hours of a CRJ flying there in the last two years so that's been you know not perfect but a very good start and then after I believe software update or sim update five or six we've got the DC6 and then closely thereafter we've got the PMDG the Phoenix the Leonardo and those were the add-ons that really made good use of the simulator and that really showed us what you could do but in the meantime, there have been add-ons like the Breedoc 737 Max, which I should dedicate a whole video to, by the way. But I promise you I wouldn't be doing too many bashing videos, so I rather don't. Then we have, you know, stuff like that. That is a pure money grab that only aims at collecting as much money as you possibly can, while at the same time delivering something that in this case has been worked on for a period of just two weeks. Talking about X and Byra again here. He, he's worked on it for two weeks time. And 
Well, the screenshots show that the default weather engine is just better. Just looking at this and this once again. So, that is the kind of money grab. We saw it with the Braydog 737 Max. We saw it with X and Vio over here. We've seen it with a lot and lot and lot of other add-ons. There is some payware stuff out there that is of such a low quality that even a lot of the mediocre freeware on flightsim.to will beat the heck out of it. So, now comes the big question. What should you, as the user, do about it? Well, first of all, there is not a lot that you can do, because the primary thing you can do is not to buy those add-ons. And seeing the recent development in Microsoft Flight Simulator, I would recommend anyone to have a close look at some of the add-ons that you're buying. Inform yourself prior to the purchase. Have not just a look at the product pages, but read some of the comments, read some reviews, watch some YouTube videos. And inform yourself about the product before you invest 42 US dollars into something that is worse than what the simulator comes with by default. Now, that is my personal opinion on what we have available right here. I have to add to this, I did not purchase Axon Vio, so I have not tried it on my own flight simulator. All my judgment comes from the developer's behavior towards the customers in the comment section that we had on FS Elite there and on other social media. And the claims in the product description compared to the pictures that he's actually showing. And I am assuming at this point that the pictures are showing the better sides of Axon Vio because that is what you usually do on product pages. All right, now it's your time. Let me know in the comments below the video what you think and if you've actually bought X and Vio, do leave me some feedback of how you like it and if you think it works any better or any worse than the default Microsoft Flight Simulator weather engine. I hope I've been able to shed a little bit of light into the analysis of those pictures and into the claims of the developer on the product page. And finally, I am really looking forward to your own comments. If you do want to support the channel, please subscribe, leave a like and comment. And if you really, really like what I'm doing and want to support my channel, you can do so through the Buy Me a Coffee link in the video description below. If you do want to become a permanent supporter, you can join my uh, Patreon page, which is also linked in the description. Thank you very much, and I'm hoping to see you all again, hopefully very, very soon, with some proper good add-ons in the air in Flight Simulator.